Hello there, Simon Jackson from LearnLoads.com here. Do you read ebooks? I think that what has happened with ebooks in the last five years says really interesting things about market growth, monopolies, and the Boston Matrix. Let me explain. What is market growth? The size of a market can be judged by looking at the number of products sold or the value of sales. Growth is judged by looking at the total sales of all firms making a particular kind of product added together. Businesses love markets that are growing quickly. They see opportunities to increase their sales and their profits. As a business, if your market is shrinking in size, there's not much you can do other than desperately try and pinch other people's customers. In other words, increase market share. In a market that is growing fast, on the other hand, more and more customers are coming to you, hopefully without you having to try too hard. But, that doesn't mean that competition is not an issue. If your business can set itself up as market leader early on, it will be well placed to benefit the most. It may even become a monopoly supplier, but I'll come back to that in a minute. Uh, the trade publication, The Bookseller, estimated that in the UK the e-book market was worth £300 million. That's in 2012, up from just £10 million in 2010. Globally, the main players in terms of ebook retailers are Barnes and Noble, Apple, and of course, the market leader by far, Amazon, which is a monopoly supplier in this market. Ah, now, Amazon. Amazon, as I say, is by far the biggest retailer of ebooks in the world. In the UK, its market share has been estimated at about 90%, possibly not much less than that in the USA. Uh, these two countries together make up the lion's share of global sales, or, you know, as I speak, they do anyway. Does it matter that Amazon's so dominant? Is its virtual monopoly a good thing or a bad thing? Well, maybe it's a good thing. After all, Amazon has got to where it is now, in part, by being very good at providing customers with a great product. Because it operates on an enormous scale, it's able to offer low prices as well. On the other hand, it's often argued that sooner or later, monopoly producers become a bit nasty, or nasty, depending on where you come from. Maybe monopolies are not always in the long-term interest of consumers. They tend to charge unacceptably high prices, uh, because they can, and their market dominance means that there's less competition than there might be, and therefore less choice for consumers. In fairness to Amazon, I'm not at all sure that they are ripping off customers. However, it's certainly true that for both trade customers, and here I mean those seeking to make and sell e-books, and the end consumers, I mean the book buying public, those people that are buying e-books, we might conceivably end up with virtually zero competition for Amazon. In this situation, the monopoly supplier has little or no incentive to work hard for its customers or offer keen prices. Now here's a simple illustration. When I uploaded the Learn Loads business ebooks onto Amazon, there was a glitch in their system. For several days, the Learn Loads Year 1 AS business ebook details could be viewed on Amazon.co.uk site, but it was clearly marked as not available for purchase. You could buy it from the USA websites. You could pay 399 rupees in India. Fine, but it wasn't for sale in the UK. Several frantic emails from me reassurances that Amazon would sort it out sometime, they couldn't say when, and in the end it took three days to actually get it priced. It's £6.60 by the way, anyway that's my plug done. Now, in fairness, this problem was sorted out, but if it hadn't been resolved after three weeks, should I have taken my e-books off somewhere else in a half when they have 90% of the market for retailing e-books? I don't think so. I really had no choice. So this kind of says something about the potential danger of monopolies. So, what's going to happen next? The business world is, like everything else, subject to change, which leads me to part three, the Boston Matrix. I'm going to assume that you remember the Boston Matrix basics, cash cows, stars, problem children and dogs. Have a look at the Learn Loads video in the marketing playlist if you need to. 
And think about two things in relation to the book market or the ebook market here. Firstly, ebooks initially were read on, you know, they were seen as something that you read on a Nook or a, a Kindle, one of these ebook devices, can of course be read on all kinds of different devices. So any tablet or smartphone or laptop can be used, no problem. You don't you don't have to read an Amazon book on a on a on a Kindle, you can read it on your phone. Um, secondly, some market analysts are beginning to talk about the ebook market reaching a plateau in terms of growth. Well, maybe. Only about four percent of all books sold were read on a phone in the UK, but things are changing fast. More and more people are happily reading ebooks on their phone. A 2014 survey by Publishing Technology found that about 36% of 18 to 34 year olds in the US read an ebook on a phone over a 12 month period. In both the UK and the US, over half of the young people surveyed said that they read more on their phone than they did in 2013. Now, bear in mind that worldwide smartphone sales are soaring. They were up 28% between 2013 and 2014 alone. So, some questions for you to chew on. In addition to your meditation on death and impermanence, one, should the Kindle ebook be seen as a rising star or a cash cow? Two, can the market for ebooks now be classified as a mature market? And three, will Amazon face tough competition sometime soon? Oh, one more thing. Learn Loads ebooks start at just £1.99. Uh, you can search Learn Loads on Amazon or go to learnloads.com. Thanks a lot. Bye. Created using Powtoon.